Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm teacher Jonathan Musao and today I'll be taking you through algebraic expressions. The first question reads, a bag has n oranges. One quarter of the number of oranges are sold in a day and half of the remaining sold the following day. Form an algebraic expression for the total number of oranges sold in the two days. So in order to solve this question, the first question, we know that the oranges, the number of oranges, we are represented by letter N. And we are, now, we are told that one quarter of the number of oranges are sold in a day. So the first day, or day one, is sold a quarter of the oranges. So it is a quarter of N, which becomes one quarter N. That's what he sold day one. Then, and half of the remaining sold the following day. So day two, he sold half of the remaining. We have to ask ourselves, what was the remaining number of oranges? So I'll draw a circle here to represent the total number of oranges that he had. And note that in day one, he sold a quarter. So that is the fraction we call a quarter. So the remaining are these three quarter. There's this quarter, there's this other quarter here. So the remaining is three quarter. So we are told day two is sold half of the remaining. So we are going to get half of this three quarter that has remained. So we are going to say it is half of three quarter. Remember three quarter is what remained. And in order to do this, we just multiply one by three to get three, two by four to get eight, and then this is n. So day two is sold three eighths n. We could have also solved the empty circle by saying the total number of oranges that is sold is represented by four over four the four quarters and then he has sold a quarter n if he has sold a quarter n day one you subtract four over four because four over four represents the entire uh, number of oranges this four over four remember is also a whole thing so he remained with four minus one we know it is three over four n so we could have also got this by subtracting four over four which represents a whole number then we subtract what he sold in day one we get the three quarter n which was the remainder so day two we just get a half of that remainder which we have seen is three eighths then after that the question says form an algebraic expression for the total number of oranges sold in the two days so now we just get what is sold in day one and what is sold in day two and put together. So we say the total is supposed to be a quarter N, which is what was sold in day one, plus three eighths N. That was what was sold in day two. Leaving it at that is correct, but you can still put this together because they all have the letter N, so they are like terms. And in order to do this, we know we are supposed to rename this 4 to be out of 8, just like this other fraction there. So we can multiply this by 2, and what you do here must also be done here. So we get 2 eighths N plus 3 eighths N. So for the two days, he sold 2 plus 3, which is 5 eighths. And remember, we don't add denominators. So for the two days, he sold 5 eighths N. Now, in the second question, we are told the greater of two consecutive numbers is doubled and added to the smaller number, Z. When we talk of consecutive numbers, we are talking of numbers that follow each other like 24 is followed by 25. You can also have 30 is followed by 31. Something I want you to note about consecutive numbers. 
numbers that follow each other they differ with one if I have 24 and I want to get 25, I just need to get 24. I add 1 and I will get the next consecutive number 25. If I have the smaller number being 30 and I want to get the next number, the next consecutive number, I just need to add 1 to get 31. So here, in this question of ours, remember we are told the smaller number is Z. Is equals to z that means the other number will be the first number will be z and to get the following number the next consecutive number we just get that z and we add one just as we did here if z was 24 to get the next consecutive number we just need to add one to get 25 so if z is the smaller number to get the other number consecutive number we just add one so they follow like this, z and z plus 1. This is like saying 24, and to get the other one is 24 plus 1, which is 25. So the consecutive numbers are z, the smaller number is z, the bigger number is z plus 1. Then the question says, form an algebraic expression for the sum of the two consecutive numbers. So now to get the sum, I just get the smaller number which is z, I add the bigger number which is z plus 1. So this is the smaller number, this is the bigger number. And the like terms here is the z. We can put together z with z. And when you add z plus z, this is 1z and another z, we get 2z. So that is 2z plus 1. We can't add this one because it's not a like term with this one. So this one, we solve it up to there. The number of bags of cement in a hardware shop is P. So we have the cement that we have in the hardware shop is P. 50 bags are sold in a day. So the number of cement sold per day is equal to 50 bags. The number of iron sheets is twice the number of remaining bags of cement. So before we tackle that, we need to know how many bags of cement have remained. If you had P bags of cement and you sell 50, what has remained? That's the question to ask yourself. You can take, for example, you say P is representing a number like, for example, let's say, uh, 120 bags. Let's say you had 120 bags. That is what represents P. Then if you sell 50 bags, what do you remain with? Of course, you'll take the number of bags that you had and you subtract the ones that you have sold. So you'll get 120 bags, you subtract 50 to get the ones that have remained. So for this case, we don't know the number of bags that he had. We only know that they were represented by P. So we are going to write P here and we say these are the bags that he had and then he sold 50. So it is 50 minus 50. This represents what has remained in the, in the hardware shop because he had P bags and he has sold 50 of them. So we subtract from P which is representing the total number of bags that he had. So these are the bags of cement that remained. Then we are told that the expression says the number of iron sheets is twice the number of remaining bags of cement. So the iron sheets, the iron sheets are double of this, what has remained. And double means times two. So we are going to get two, we multiply by what has remained for the number of bags of cement. So we multiply by P minus 50. This represents the bags of cement that remained. And these iron sheets are twice. And twice means you multiply by 2. And in this case, we have to multiply 2 by P and 2 by 50. We can't separate because these are the bags that remained. So whatever is in the bracket must be multiplied by these two. So get uh, the number of iron sheets, which are twice. 
So we are going to get 2 times P, which is 2P. Then 2 times 50, which is 100, so minus 100. So these are the number of iron sheets that he had. Then the question continues and says, Form an algebraic expression for the sum of the number of iron sheets and the number of bags of cement left in the stock. So we want to get the number of iron sheets and the number of bags of cement that were left. So remember that bags of cement that were left is this P minus 50. And we have seen that the number of iron sheets is twice the number of uh, cement that were left. And we got the number of iron sheets are this. So we are going to put this together. These are the bags of cement that remained and these are the iron sheets that he has. So we are going to get P minus 50 which represents the number of bags of cement he has. We put together with the number of uh, iron sheets that he has which is 2P minus 100. If you look well, we have like terms. We have for example P and 2P can be put together. Then we have negative 50 and negative 100 can be put together. So we start with the P plus 2P which gives us 3P. Then minus 50 minus 100. It's like saying you have a debt of 50 and you have another debt of 100. That totals to a debt of 150. A negative is like a debt. So minus 50 minus 100 is a debt of 150. So the algebraic uh, expression will be 3p minus 150. For this minus 50 minus 100, I will also have another lesson to teach you how to work out negative and positive integers or numbers. So just to take a quick one to remind you, the number of cement, bags of cement were p. He sold 50 bags. I said, for example, if P was 120, just taking an example, that would mean he had 120 and he has sold 50, so we would have subtracted to get the remaining. So because we don't know how many bags he had, we are just told it's P, we are going to get those bags that he had, we take away 50 what he has sold, because when you sell, you take away from your stock. So this becomes now what he sold, we can't sell further than that. What remained? P minus 50 is what remained, not what is sold. Then the iron sheets we are told were twice the number of bags of cement that remained. So we are going to multiply by 2 the number of bags that have remained twice in order to get the iron sheets. And where we got 2 times P is 2P. 2 times 50 we got is 100. Then the question told us we get the total number of uh, bags of cement that remained plus the number of iron sheets that he has. So we have seen that these are the number of bags of cement that were left and we have got these are the iron sheets that he has 2p minus 100. So now putting together we get the number of bags of cement that remained p minus 50. We put together with the iron sheets that are in the hardware that is 2p minus 100. Then we put the like terms together, or we add P plus 2P, which is 3P, then minus 50 minus 100 becomes minus 150. Because minus 50, I've told you, is like a debt. You have a debt of somebody of 50, and you have another debt of 100. So if somebody, if you are to pay back, you are to pay back 150. So a negative, I usually say, is like a debt. And I say it operation of these negative and positive numbers, I will give you another lesson, I will teach you that. So we get minus 50 minus 100 becomes minus 150. And don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and share. And also hit that notification bell so that you can get alerts whenever I post a new video.